see a lot of like inclusion and I see a lot of diversity um posts and comments and then I I'm in my head I'm like we do not implement those very well we do not I think that a lot of people are satisfied with just putting diverse bodies into spaces where they weren't any and then they think that's what it what it is or with schools and we're like well we're just gonna put more you know disabled children with non-disabled children and then that's it and we're good mm. and it, I think that we don't go far enough and um, I, I am exploring that post in so much greater detail. And I'm going to share that later sometime. But what I was getting at was that I don't feel comfortable within the autism community as a whole. You know, if I did, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now. Like, mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't be, there's a lot of division. There's a lot of, of, there's a hierarchy here, whether people want to admit it or not. And, and that's with all other disabled movements as well. It's like, it's, they're all centered in, in whiteness and they all do not consider the needs of their black and indigenous populations and so that was me saying i don't feel fully comfortable within the autism community i also don't feel fully comfortable within the neurodiversity community either for the same reasons and um When I wrote that, I was like, we got to figure out a way to, because at their core, intersectionality and neurodiversity want the same thing. And they examine the same types of things. And so what would it be like if they work together instead of being two parallel concepts? And so I was thinking, I was like, how would they work? How would neurodiversity as a paradigm work with intersectionality as a theoretical concept? And so that's what I was exploring when I was writing that. I was like, what would they, how would that look? And I was like, I think we would have a better understanding of diversity and inclusion if we worked those two together. Like, what are their strengths in each? What are their what are their core principles? Would they work well together? Could they work well together? And that's what I was doing. I was writing it out. And I think I was trying to like find the answer myself as I was writing. I wanted to know like how would they work yeah. together? Because I feel like they both want the same things. Yeah, definitely. And a lot of this can sound really abstract <clears throat> sometimes. So what are some of your examples specifically? Like maybe could you put it in a real life example um, so that people can better understand? So I'm seeing here and I'm... Um... Like an example of the way it could work together. So intersectionality, it looks at the our systems of privilege and oppression so it's looking at um not just all the ways that we are put at a disadvantage it's also looking at the ways that we are privileged it's looking at where power comes in and where power leaves it's a power based concept what intersectionality will do is it will take a person or a community and it will look at where their, where their power comes in and where their power depletes or where they have no power at all. 
And they are looking to find different ways that they can support that person or that community based on where their power fluctuates. You know, um, neurodiversity does similar, but in a kind of like a little bit of a different way. So what they are looking at is they're looking at how our brains operate and how it works within a society who mostly disables us because of how our minds work or because of how our bodies work. Um, They're looking at also where we are strong at and where society would view us as weak at and looking at all the ways that they can address those needs and help those with different minds live successfully in this world. And so when you have these two, intersectionality and neurodiversity, both looking at different power structures, different privileges, different oppressions, and you have these two incredibly what I feel are powerful concepts or powerful things and they're operating in different lanes I was just like what if we put them together Mm -hmm. so I'm sitting there and I'm like as a black autistic woman that I'm disadvantaged in a lot of different ways and intersectionality recognizes this it 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 shows where my power lies and it'll show me where it doesn't what can they what can be done to fix that you're looking at a a black child who's autistic who will be diagnosed at a later age than a white child with autism um excuse me, if they're diagnosed at all. But sometimes they're misdiagnosed. Sometimes they're not diagnosed at all. And sometimes they're giving diagnosis of ODD. Yeah. Um, or just simply ADHD. If even that, <laughs> you know, a lot of times we don't even get one or they're diagnosed far later. So they're missing out on a lot of vital um, early intervention programs they're missing out on a lot of services schools will suspend black children at higher rates um expel them at higher rates. so then they're also missing out on services and supports there so intersectionality will look at what is happening here and they'll attempt to address that neurodiversity also does a similar thing they're looking at their minds they're looking at how their minds operate why is it that this mind is treated so differently than every other one Mm -hmm. what is it that can be done to address that and so when looking at both of them and dissecting both of their parts right because I like to take things apart (laughs) Mm -hmm. so looking at them both separately and you're looking at these and you're just like they're kind of wanting similar things they're kind of wanting the same types of things they're looking at the same types of stuff right Mm -hmm. so why not try to figure out how well they could intersect. And a lot of times people don't really look at um, intersectionality from a disabled perspective. See, a lot of times disabled people are left out of like a lot of conversations, the majority of conversations, really. And so then, but then you have the neurodiversity movement and they're not always looking at race. Right. They're usually just looking at neurotype. They're usually Mm -hmm. just uh, uh, approaching 
the the issue as a state of how our minds are operating they're just usually approaching it from me just being autistic mm-hmm. so they're looking for solutions on how to help me as an autistic person and then you typically neglect that I have these issues coming into me for, as being a black person as well so we need to introduce both introduce because a lot of times neurodiversity isn't that isn't intersectional that much especially when it it cross sections with race or gender or um sexuality anything it's a it's a large focus on a neurotype how our brains are and how we are disadvantaged in a society that leverages normal brains, quote unquote. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. You're bringing up a lot of great points and you're creating that space, like you're saying, through your blog. You're yes. inviting the different angles to shed some light on areas that maybe weren't. That's what I, I'm trying to, to do. I mean, even if you. Even if you were to ask someone who's not in the disabled community at all, but they've heard of neurodiversity, and you're like, what do y'all guys think neurodiversity is? Most of the people that I've asked, they automatically assume it's an autistic movement. Mm-hmm. Like they don't even consider the other neurotypes right. out there. Yeah. And so it's looked at as a wholly largely autistic thing. And they're missing all of the other neurodevelopmental diagnoses out there. Mm-hmm. You know, they're missing ADHD. They're missing dyslexia. Mm-hmm. You know, they're missing those. They're missing those that have uh, like autism and ADHD together. Yeah. You right. know, or if they have a, another type of learning disability together. And so, at first, I was like, "Well, okay. Well, they don't really know." that much about the neurodiversity community because they're like outside of it so maybe that's why they just assume it's an autism thing but when you actually break it down and you're sitting there and you're looking at it it does look largely autistic Mm -hmm. right it's like it it that's what dominates this movement you know and it's like we aren't really looking at other diagnosis is that make our minds different that make our minds different from um the general population and that also like we're kind of intersectional in our neurotype as well listen everything's not you know one kind of thing so yeah and it's important to give everyone yeah. a voice and a place to stand yeah that's what i think that's why i was thinking they, they can work they can work together yeah. I think that it can just like as the like guy as I was saying, I was like, intersectionality or as it will look at me as a black person and a woman, and it and it'll combine those two and then it'll show a completely new experience that I have. Mm-hmm. So I'm it's 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 me being more than black. It's me being more than a woman. It's me being put together. And what experience, that's a completely new experience that I have. So if we were to find a way to put intersectionality together with neurodiversity, combine those, that would create an entirely different framework that we can operate under. Yeah. And maybe that will give us some better ways to address the issue of inclusion or diversity. What does that really mean? You've been watching Autism Knows No Borders. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Also, we'd love to hear from you, so let us know what you think in the comments section. Click here to watch this interview in its entirety. You can also find us on your favorite podcast app. Tune in each week for engaging conversations of how people across the globe are inspiring change and building community. Thanks for watching. Take care.